how to mix faster. I bet this is a question that every single music producer asks and if you're watching this you are looking for some tips, techniques and strategies that will help you to mix music faster and this is what I'm going to be covering in this video. Hi everyone, my name is Vlad, I'm a DJ and one man band music producer. <laughs> So what do you guys think of the track? Did you like it? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'd love to hear your feedback. And let's start with uh, the tips. And the first tip I have on my list is having a template. So what is a template? Template basically is I start a project with some plugins that are set up. For example, you can have reverb rooms. For example, you can have some tracks like kick, bass, drums, you know, something basic that you open every time. And by doing that, you just save your time because you don't need to do everything from scratch. Although I am more a fan of doing everything from scratch, but this is a really cool tip that will save your time and yeah. And let's move to the tip number two. And tip number two is learn your plugins. If you don't know what a specific plugin does, or for example, what is compression, what is saturation, by the way, uh, I've made a really, really cool video about saturation and uh, check it out. I'm going to leave a link at the end of this video and somewhere like up here as a suggestion. So you can go and check it out and learn more about saturation. What I mean here is that if you don't know what a specific plugin does, it's going to be impossible to get a nice sound and mix your track. So if you just yeah throw a compressor on the on the group and you start tweaking it and you just maybe don't hear what it does and maybe you don't know how it works. Just learn your plugins and after that you will be able to mix your tracks properly because if you want to do mixing, make sure that you know the theory and what a specific plugin does, when to use it, how to use it, etc, etc. This is a really important one because uh, in my own experience, I've had this problem where I just knew that all right compressor does something saturation does something but i didn't have you know like an algorithm or a strategy that i've used over and over and when i've learned everything the mixing process for me became way more easier than the production although i don't think that mixing and production are like that complicated all right so i hope you guys get this one and let's move to the tip number three. And the tip number three is about using the stuff that you like for a specific reason or the stuff that is necessary. So for example, what I mean here, if you have 20 compressors, it's going to affect your workflow and take a lot of your time because you're going to every time start playing with these compressors. Oh, should I pick this one? Should I pick this one? Just choose a couple of plugins like compressors, equalizers, anything that you like. You like the sound, you like the design, how it works, etc, etc. Learn it and it's going to make your mixing process so, so much faster because once again, I've had this problem and I'm talking about my own experience in this video and if you have a lot of stuff that you don't use that often, it's going to take a lot of your time. So just get rid of everything you don't need. And this is also the, the next tip. So use only the stuff that you like, that you know, and delete everything else that you don't use. And here I'm talking about sample and loop libraries. This is really, really like 
how to say that thing that will take a lot of your time when you're just scrolling through the samples through the loops just leave for example for the drums one library i'm using in most cases like nine out of ten just one library that sounds really good it was recorded properly it was processed with analog gear and it sounds amazing so i just use the same samples over and over again and it will not only help you to mix faster but also you will achieve more unique sound like the sound that is your own so this is a really cool one all right let's move to the tip number five and the tip number five is about grouping and coloring your tracks so if you look at my project and if you watched my first videos if you've been a subscriber for a while you've noticed that i use the same colors in every single project and the reason why is that i know what a specific color means so for example uh, the yellow color is the low end and when I look at my project I just see all right here's the low end here are the drums here are the instruments and just pick the colors you like and it will help you to navigate through the project and understand what's going on in the project that was one of the coolest tips that helped me and one more thing is about grouping it's basically almost the same thing but uh group your tracks properly so for example one more time you see that here in the low low end group i have the kick the bass the bass layer and the tom so how i group my channels is about the sound character so for example everything that is about low end i'm gonna put in that group everything that is about the drums i'm gonna put in the drums like shakers cymbals what else maybe some loops everything and if i have for example a very very low drum i will think about putting it into the uh, the low group because it has a low character low sound like really, really subby with a lot of low end and the same thing applies to every single sound just group your tracks properly color them and it will change the whole game for you um i promise <laughs> just do that and you will see the result all right so let's move to the next tip and the next tip is about sound design and picking the right sounds for your track and in electronic dance music we don't really mix the music itself it's not like a rock pop i mean I'm, I'm talking about like acoustic genres where you really have to mix in the electronic dance music world we create the sounds from the beginning and we need to make sure that we use good sounds and the same thing applies to anything, like anything, literally. The drums, the kick, the bass, the instruments, they all should sound good from the beginning. And this will help you to mix faster and understand the process a bit better. And when you will get this one, when you will master the skill, it will become so easier for you to mix because you have a good sounds from the beginning and you don't have to do a lot so let me show you for example if i play the kick and the bass I think you can hear that the drums sound really really good they fit well together with the kick with the bass and this is the thing i don't want to change the sounds but if you can imagine in your head 
how it were like a bad drum loop sound, some weak one shots, not really compressed together, it's not, it doesn't have nice groove, etc, etc. The same thing with the instruments, with everything. Make sure to spend time on making the right sounds so after the arrangement, the sound design process, you don't, you will not need, you, so after the sound design and the arrangement process, you won't need to spend a lot of time in mixing. So this one's really easy. Uh, the next one is about arrangement and this is the thing that so many producers underrate or just don't get and arrangement is the thing that will basically decide whether you will have a good sounding mix or a crap mix. Here it's not only about the sound itself, it's also about the structure because crappy arrangement it will not sound good, it won't be interesting. And when you get the the idea how to do a proper arrangement, you, you can just use reference tracks to copy the structure of the track. It's really common thing that all of us do. It's not like something bad. And let me show you, in this example, you can see that I don't have a lot of things going on. So it just one lead, the kick, and the bass and this is why it sounds so good when you understand that the key is in this simplicity your tracks will sound so much better because I've had this problem where I I had a lot of tracks uh, I'm, I'm talking about the, the tracks inside Ableton like 100 120 and you don't need a lot you really don't it's all about the idea. The core cool idea is everything. And here, it's, it's really simple. And as you can hear, when we have a little amount of elements in the mix, first of all, it's really easy to mix. It will be clean because you don't have a lot of sounds and it will be simple and interesting for, for the listener. So this is it. I hope you guys get this one. And uh, let's move to the next one. And the next one is about saving presets, which is similar to having like a template with some presets. Uh, you can save any kind of presets, whether it's reverb, delay, uh, EQ, EQ, compressor, saturator, but I think that presets for the EQ and compressor, they don't really work in most of cases. Maybe if you've set up something that is like, you know, really unique to your music, maybe it, it will work, but for the EQ and for the compressor, I would recommend just every time set it up from, from scratch. But I have uh, a basic preset, if you look at the EQ, with the low cut and low shell filter, so I save a little bit of time and so I don't have to do that, you know, every time. This is what you can do, just save a basic preset and yeah. And you can save any kind of presets and after that you will have a library of your own presets and it will help you to achieve more unique, more interesting sound. Uh, the next tip is about using reference tracks. This one is really simple. I don't want to talk a lot about that. Just use reference track in your production, in your project, compare your track to the reference one so you get the idea what could be fixed if it sounds good if it's something wrong with my track or is it maybe good let's move to the next tip and this one is really really important so listen carefully here guys when you mix do first so for example eq first without listening and 
after that, you can listen. The thing here is that you will keep your ears fresh as long as possible because you are not constantly listening to the sound. You don't get used to the sound of your track. And this is the thing. You can do that with saturation, basically any kind of plugin. So just do first and then listen. And this is the tip that changed the game for me. And you will not only mix faster, but you will also learn to hear and for example, if, if I just use an EQ, you will know that a specific frequency sounds like that and you will be able to identify the problematic or unpleasant frequencies without listening. And it's all about learning how a specific plugin acts like and how it sounds. And let's move to the last tip, guys. And this one is more like a summary of what I've talked about in this video. And it's about finding your own style and approach to mixing. Because every producer is different. Although we do the same thing, we do it differently. So, for example, I can compress one way and you will compress another way. And in the mixing, there are so, so many things and when you learn the the stuff like the plugins when you implement all of these tips you will get an approach you will develop a style and it will be so so easy for you to mix your own tracks that was all for today guys if you liked this video please uh, subscribe to the channel like this video leave your nice comment below say hello maybe you have some ideas about future videos I'm always open to start a new conversation with people. It's really nice to talk to new guys on my channel. And uh, yeah, don't forget about that nice little bell icon. So you trigger the algorithm and it will help the channel to grow faster. Thank you very much for watching this video, guys. And I'll see you guys in the next one.